Hello everyone, welcome back. This is Elect Right. Today I'm bringing you a follow-up to yesterday's video when I talked about Biden's effect on House candidates. This one, as you can guess by the map and the title, will be about Senate candidates, and I have left them all blank so we can talk about hopefully each one in depth. Not really the case for many of these safe seats because not much discussion is necessary. But just as with the House race, we will start in Minnesota and work our way clockwise. So in Minnesota, you have Amy Klobuchar, who is probably the strongest Senate incumbent in the entire country, arguably. She has won her elections by such massive margins historically that it really boggles the mind in more ways than one. In 2022, or sorry, in 2018, she won her Senate race by roughly the same margin that Elizabeth Warren won hers in Massachusetts by, which is incredible. Despite the fact that in each new election her margin gets smaller, she is facing, or at least likely to face, a very poor candidate in Royce White, who spends more time arguing with people on Twitter than actually campaigning. Klobuchar will have no problem getting reelected. Her margin might narrow just due to the national environment and increasing polarization. I think she wins by about 20 points, though. Next is Wisconsin. That's actually interesting. Hovde is probably one of the best candidates we have this cycle. If there's anyone who could take out Tammy Baldwin, it's probably him. A lot of this basically depends on how much money the RNC puts into this race and how much Trump runs up the score by in Wisconsin. At the moment, there's a very good shot that Hovde can win. I saw a poll out, I think it was just earlier today, that had Hovde tied with Baldwin, which is an outlier, but Wisconsin polls actually usually favor the Democrats by massive margins, and it's notable that there are already polls showing them tied. I think at the moment, Eric Hovde might just win his seat, and we'll, we'll be changing the, the color code there to the normal thing that you can expect. Michigan is another interesting case. It also largely depends on how much Trump wins the state by, how much money the RNC puts in, etc. I'm not sure. I don't think that Mike Rogers is the best candidate out there. I think that Slotkin is definitely a superior one, but... I think that if the Democrats put a ton of resources into holding these Senate seats, it would have a much bigger effect. It would be much more beneficial than them putting the resources into holding a lot of these House seats because the Senate is much more institutional. And you see, obviously, a lot less turnover there. I think that Slotkin will narrowly hold this seat for the Democrats. It'll be very close, though. I wish that the Michigan GOP had a better bench. I wish that until recently they were run more competently because maybe the groundwork would have been laid otherwise for a Republican win in that seat. Next is Indiana. Jim Banks will have no problem getting elected. That'll be a hold for Republicans. And Jim Banks will be a pretty good senator. Vance tier, Hawley tier, etc. Ohio is another interesting one. I think at the moment, Moreno is probably going to win over Sherrod Brown. I do think it's interesting, by the way, that Moreno means brown in Spanish, so you have brown versus brown. That's aside from the main point here, which is the fact that Trump is likely to increase his margin here massively. Moreno is a very good candidate, despite what some elector bros might say. Moreno, I think, will probably win the seat by three or four as Trump carries the state by potentially 12 or 13. There's only so much the Democrats can do with Trump winning at the top of the ballot by such a massive margin. At a certain point, it just becomes nearly impossible for a Democrat to win down ballot. Then we're going to go to West Virginia. That's going to be an easy flip for Republicans. Jim Justice is running against basically no real opposition there, and he would easily win this seat even if Joe Manchin was still was running for re-election. Next, going up to Pennsylvania, Dave McCormick is probably going to get a lot of support from the RNC. I think that he will make this closer than expected. Certainly this will be the closest race that Bob Casey has ever faced, but that's not saying much considering past ones he's won by like 15 or so. I think Bob Casey wins this by about four, while Trump wins up ballot by three, I would say. So seven points of vote splitting, probably some of the most notable in the country, but Democrats will hold it. In New York, Kirsten Gillibrand's running for another term. She'll be fine. 
even as uh, polls come out showing that Trump is within striking distance in New York, which sort of just boggles the mind. I, I just find this stuff way too good to be true, and I think that we should temper our expectations just a little bit. Bernie Sanders running for another term, despite being like 89 or however old he is, he's going to be fine. Unfortunately, it's Vermont. It's a bizarre state. They're all communists up there. It's very unfortunate, but that's just the reality. I think Elizabeth Warren, yeah, it, it would be Elizabeth Warren running for another term in Massachusetts. She will be fine. In Connecticut, I think it's Richard Blumenthal, or I guess it could be Chris Murphy. I... I don't know which one is running for re-election, they'll be fine, point being. Rhode Island, uh, either White House or Reed will be okay. Maine is an underrated one. Angus King has a lot of crossover appeal because he's running as an independent and he's seen as a moderate by some for some reason. I don't think the Republicans have the best candidate there. Their name is like unpronounceable basically. Angus King will win. I think that um, it'll probably be closer than expected. Probably Angus King wins by seven or so. Which is, which is notably less than Susan Collins won by in 2020. In New Jersey, this is a sleeper flip for Republicans, I think. You have a very moderate Republican running. You have Menendez as a vote splitter for the Democrats. And you have an environment where Trump is said to be getting close in New Jersey. So this could be like a Mark Kirk type scenario here. Uh, Mark Kirk was in a is, was in a general election. He got elected in 2010 in Illinois, but perhaps the same sort of scenario here, where Republican wins in deep blue seat and is just guaranteed to be out after one term. Basically, it could happen. I am going to say that we narrowly lose this, and yeah, again, a lot of this stuff is just too good to be true for me. I can't believe all of it. Delaware, I think it's Rochester running for that seat there. She'll be fine. Maryland, this one has drummed up a lot of discussion. You have Larry Hogan running against Angela Also Brooks. Also Brooks is definitely a weaker candidate than David Trone, who the Democrats should have nominated if they wanted the seat on complete lockdown. Polls recently have shown that Hogan is within striking distance here. Again, too good to be true. It's Maryland. It's like literally one of the three bluest states in the country. I think that also Brooks wins off that alone. Again, just like I was saying in Ohio, and this is an even more extreme example of it, there's only so much that you can do when the top of the when the candidate at the top of the ticket is winning by 30 points. Virginia, it's gonna be Hung Cow versus Tim Kaine. It's Hung Cow is a very good candidate. He almost won against Jennifer Wexton last time around in the House seat in, based out of Loudoun County. He will make this close. I think that Hung Cow probably loses by about five, probably, to Tim Kaine. That would be my guess, anyway. Tennessee, you have Marsha Blackburn running for a second term. I don't even know who the Democrat is. It doesn't matter. Republicans will hold that seat pretty easily. Down to Florida, it's going to be Rick Scott running again. He is the man who is infamous for only winning races by about a point or so. This will be by far the biggest victory of his career. Rick Scott probably wins by double digits, which will completely break the image of Rick Scott as someone who just barely wins each election. Mississippi, the Republican will be fine. I think it's Hyde Smith. I, actually, no, it's not. It's Roger Wicker. Regardless, it doesn't matter. Texas, Ted Cruz. I think that this could be a seat that actually is closer than a lot of people expect. I think that Cruz will underperform Trump. Cruz will probably win this by about five or six. He's not a very good candidate. He's very easy to dislike. There's a bunch of things about Ted Cruz that make him just a subpar candidate. The left despises him. They're going to pour a ton of money into this. And just like the 2018 Senate race, it's going to be closer than expected, I think. But Ted Cruz will hold on. He's in no real danger of actually losing. Josh Hawley will be okay as well, as will the two Nebraska senators, those being Deb Fisher and Pete Ricketts. In New Mexico... It's Martin Heinrich, I believe. I don't even know who the Republican is running there. You've seen polls that have Trump close there. I just don't think it's going to be enough or even close to it. Democrats will hold that seat. We are going to look at Arizona next. And Arizona is very interesting. I think that if Mark Lamb wins the Senate primary, we will win this seat pretty easily. However, I don't think he's going to do that. And so we're in a dogfight because Kerry Lake is not the best candidate, far from the best candidate, actually. And despite Gallego being this like out of control radical leftist, they still have a very good shot of winning this seat. 
I don't know, though. If you look at an environment where Trump is winning Arizona by, like, six, which is what I think the polls say right now, maybe even seven, I, I, I don't have an up-to-date analysis of that because I haven't looked at the polls yet today, state by state. But I really don't know what to make of this one. It's fully possible that Carrie Lake can win. I don't know. I just, there's something... It's hard for me to make a guess. I, I don't know on this one. I really don't. I would say, if anything... I'm going to err on the side of caution, as I usually try to do, and give this to Gallego. Next, California. Adam Schiff is unfortunately guaranteed to be going to the Senate. There's not much Steve Garvey can do there. It's unfortunate, but that's just what we're dealing with. Utah, John Curtis, which was Trent Staggs, but it's not. He'll be okay, too. Nevada, you have Sam Brown versus Jackie Rosen. I'm not entirely certain whether Sam Brown is that good of a candidate. I tend to lean towards thinking he isn't. He could have a shot, though, again, if it's the Trump factor, however much Trump wins the state by. I don't think that there will be much vote splitting down ballot. And in previous Trump elections, Trump has actually underperformed Republicans down ballot. If that's tr the case here, you could see Republicans flip like eight seats or something like that. But I don't think that that's going to happen. I think that Trump will be the top performer. I think that Sam Brown probably loses a very narrow race here. I have to err on the side of caution, just like with Arizona. Democrats will hold that. Washington, the Democrat will be fine there. I can't even remember if it's Cantwell or Murray. I think it's Murray. I'm not sure. It doesn't matter. Montana, this is the last, like, actually interesting one. You have Tim Sheehy versus John Tester. I have Hovde down as beating Baldwin, so that should tell you what I'm about to say here. Tim Sheehy will finally defeat John Tester, will end his career. I wish it would have been done sooner, but it hasn't. This is the one where John Tester is finally booted out, and I think Tim Sheehy beats him by four or five. I don't think it'll be particularly close. Trump, at the top of the ticket, will win this state by probably 20 points, maybe more. And if that's the case, he, Tim Sheehy might even win by more than five. We'll see. North Dakota, Kevin Kramer will be fine, obviously. It's North Dakota. Wyoming, um, Barrasso, I think it is, will be fine as well. And then Hawaii as well. There's not much hope for Republicans to win that state yet. So basically, my prediction here is Republicans flip four seats and finish with 53 Senate seats. I was sort of alluding to this earlier, but if we see a scenario where there's even less vote splitting than I'm anticipating, we could see an absolute bloodbath here. Because conceivably, like Arizona and Nevada... Sorry, Arizona and Nevada are in play. Michigan is in play. Maybe Pennsylvania is in play. Uh, if, if you look at, maybe I'm wrong about Larry Hogan, Maryland's in play. Uh, if the vote splitting gets the Republican over the edge of New Jersey, that's 59 right there. You could be looking at an absolute blowout in the Senate. And it would really be a bit surprising given the absolute nature of our failure to capture the Senate despite such a winnable map last time around in the 2022 midterms. It would be very remarkable if that were the case, and we did get a massive Republican Senate majority like this, but hey, as it currently stands, something like this is in play. That's just the reality. I'm going to, as I've said so many times, be cautiously optimistic and not just drink the complete red wave kool-aid like i did in 2022 a lot of work has to be done and we should never get complacent so get to work help out your local candidates help president trump get another term and hopefully we will have the best election possible at the moment it's looking like a 2008 style election for us which i never would have thought would have happened so that is all for me today this has been elect right america first america always